Practical Farmers has been working with Iowa farmers to document and share the nuts and bolts of small grains production to help farmers interested in adopting small grains into their own crop rotation. Uh, one of the main messages is regardless of what you think or you knew about oats 10 years ago or 15 years ago, these really are not your father's oats. My name is Bruce Roskins. I've been with Grain Millers now about two and a half years and have spent uh, most of my career working for cereal and food company. Uh, Iowa at one point in time was one of the largest oat production states in the nation back in the 1950s and that's kind of uh, phased out obviously with corn and soy. So uh, just like with any profitable uh, production today, profitable oats production takes a strategy. It includes a crop rotation strategy. Unfortunately, part of the reason we see lower yields in oats is the fact that it gets put on the crappiest ground. Oats can tolerate cooler, wetter soils better than many other cereal crops, and a good viable seed oat will germinate well at 45 degrees. The rate, two and a half to three and a half bushel per acre, I like the seed oats fairly heavy. I think you get a better ground cover. I think you do a better job of, of uh, shading the soil to reduce some of the seed uh, or so, excuse me, some of the weed pressure. Best early weed control is is a good heavy stand. Your goal is to try to get a minimum of 18 and maybe 23 to 25 plants per square foot for a final stand. Oats like fertilizer. They like nitrogen. Nitrogen is directly responsible for the yield, for the amount of growth that you get. Phosphate is the element that is directly responsible for root growth, root depth, the uptake of the nitrogen through the root system, and the straw strength. A lot of farmers are afraid to put nitrogen on oats because they're afraid they're going to lodge. Yes, there's some varietal differences with that, but one of the biggest problems that we normally see is they've got too much nitrogen in ratio to the phosphate. Uh, harvesting and storage, um, just producing the crop isn't good enough. We really have to look at the way that we harvest the oats and store the oats. I still like swapping oats. Uh, I may be old school. Uh, back when dad was doing it or grandpa was doing it, they swath the oats. Uh, they left it lay. Uh, the old rule of thumb was when you thought that the oats were ready to go, you went to the fair for three days and then you came back and swathed the oats. Uh, today, everybody wants to take it straight cut, and uh, there are shortcuts that can be done on that, but some of them that are not necessarily beneficial to the quality that you get. Uh, setting the combine, I'll challenge anybody to go grab their combine manual today and look for the setting on oats. It's just not there. You want to slow cylinder speed and widen the concave clearances if you're extremely dry, if it's a little bit uh, wetter. A little bit tougher crop. You don't want to dehull that kernel, but you can then turn up your fan speed, uh, set your concaves and your cylinder clearances a little bit tighter. For drying oats, the target is between 12 and 13 percent moisture. Uh, I really encourage bin aeration if at all possible. 